Hello and welcome to Policy Watch, your pack snapshot of the week's biggest business stories, their context, their relevance and policy impact. I'm Govind Raj Jaisi Raj. This week saw some big news with the Indian Meteorological Department or IMD announcing that the monsoons will be above normal. More specifically, the IMD said rainfall in the four-month period of June to September was likely to be 106% of the long period average or the average of monsoon rain over the 50-year period from 1951 to 2000. On the other hand, severe water shortages across the country are already having a social and economic impact. Now, some estimates say shortages could bring down the index of industrial production or IIP by 40 to 50 basis points, while the manufacturing sector could also take a 50 to 75 basis points hit. So what is likely to be the cumulative impact of the good and bad news on the economy in the near term as we see it? How could growth pan out and who could benefit or who could not, at least in the near term? To discuss this, I'm joined by Ajay Baga, Chairman of OPC Asset Solutions and Dipopam Chaudhary, Chief Economist, Zyphin Research. Gen gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. Dipopam, let me begin with with you. Let's understand the impact of the good news and the bad news. The bad news is of course still trailing us because we're still seeing the impact of a bad monsoon uh, in the previous years and or uh, and and the combined effects of drought. Yeah, definitely the good the good aspect of this news is the impact on sentiment. Mm -hmm. So sentiment would recover to a great extent which are very very much subdued to be, be it the investor sentiment or the consumer sentiment. But what is of concern is today we are living in, in the times when our phones or internet can control our ACs or TVs inside our home, but our food supplies are being controlled by age-old uh, factors, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. were which were like uh, prevalent even 500 years back. Mm -hmm. So definitely more green revolutions are, exp uh, are uh, sought. Uh, it is good that the so current… you're saying fundamentally we don't have a handle over agricultural Absolutely. production or output Absolutely. or control over it, okay? So the, the, the impact of IMD's mm -hmm. forecast on mm -hmm. markets or, 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 its as or its impact on the overall economic prospects. I think is is not the way any emerging economy should rely on, mm -hmm. because emerging economy should rely on sustained development, sustained uh, pro or, or progressive technological advancements. Mm -hmm. So the current budget was a step in that uh, st uh, in the direction where a lot of uh, impetus was paid towards uh, developing irrigation and, and and agricultural technology. But this has to be a sustained process year on year. Yeah. This so has you're to be saying that up. even if the monsoons are good, if we don't have the infrastructure on ground to actually absorb and take forward this good work then we've lost the advantage absolutely yes okay. yes yes so we are still so much dependent on on, on old uh, uh, factors like monsoons or uh, uh, crop productivity mm -hmm. etc this has to change right so let's understand what will be the physical impact assuming the monsoons are uh, as the as the predictions are made out to be 106 percent over normal uh, obviously very good maybe the uh, predictions are coming in a little earlier than they should because usually you get them in may the, that, the more right. detailed yes. predictions but nevertheless what would change See, uh, the first impact would be on inflation. So, mm -hmm. uh, the Reserve Bank of India was a little cautious on the on the path of food inflation and how volatile the food inflation is expected to be. And a lot of lot w within their model was uh, tied to the monsoon predictions. So, this, this this prediction will give a lot more confidence to the Monetary Policy Committee, and and we can expect a, a, a little more uh, 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 softening in interest rates, mm -hmm. which which should help in speeding up the capex cycle, which is at, at a very low level right now. Mm -hmm. So, inflation is the immediate. Uh, impact Impact bearer, and then followed by that, uh, the the, the uh, right. cheaper loans would be the, uh, the next. Uh, right, if interest rates yes, uh, yes, come yes, down. Absolutely. Okay, Ajay. So the markets reacted very positively, and we're going to talk about that in more detail later. But what did the markets take away from this? I mean, and, and to what extent is this sort of the sort of reactive exuberance versus long-term faith? So it's a relief. Mm -hmm. uh, straight away, it's a big relief because India, 58% population is rural and the most of it is dependent on the monsoon. So mm -hmm. nearly 50% of agricultural productivity. But leave aside that, just to stay alive, people mm -hmm. need that water and which comes from monsoon. So it was a big relief rally. Markets are forward looking, so markets discount mm -hmm. six months earlier mm -hmm. what the impact will be. It's not that water will uh, fall in uh, June and immediately companies' profits will go up. They'll start showing a trend by December. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen immediately. But it's a big risk off the table okay. that the market has started discounting. Right. So, Devapam, uh, risk off the table, is, uh, is that or are we calling it too early? I mean, more looking at an economic point of view. Well, uh, the El Nino uh, the pressures are much lesser this year. The, all the global agencies are pointing towards that. So I think it is it, it, it's not un, uncalled for and it's, it's, it's a good time to come up with this uh, forecast that uh, rainfalls would be on track this year. Mm -hmm. 
So there, it, it's definitely right. risk off the table, okay. I would say. So let's understand the impact on the agriculture sector itself, which has obviously seen some growth in the last year, but was negative the year before. What could it be this year and how can that potentially impact the larger economy? Uh, agricultural growth is expected to be, uh, would, would be expect, uh, is expected to be much better compared to the last two years. Mm. Uh, there are a couple of reasons. First, obviously, the monsoon expectations. Second is a lot has happened on the ground regarding managing the supply side bottlenecks and with of, of agricultural produce mm -hmm. so if you look at the the e mandis that has been or that are being set up mm. if you look at some of the uh, the measures which are take are being taken to remove the entire middleman existence in pricing of agricultural goods and services uh, th these things will definitely have a very positive impact and this impact would be seen quite sooner than expected uh, maybe p possibly mm -hmm. this year so that means farm incomes would improve yes right but is this does that mean agricultural output overall will improve and to what extent can that impact gdp growth or the country's economic growth is the question uh, right now the agricultural productivity or or the yield from this it's hect each hectare of land mm. may not see a dramatic increase compared to how it was maybe in the last five years but the mere fact that pricing would become much more transparent and and storage issues won't be there uh, would lead to some amount of contribution right. to the uh, overall GDP from agriculture. Right. Okay. So, assuming farm incomes do go up, I mean, let me put that question to you and then to Devakum. Uh, what does this mean, particularly, I'd say, for uh, the obvious candidates, which is durable companies and fast-moving consumer product companies? See, straight away, uh, you have a big. Uh, a, the uh, government had a big focus mm. in the budget, so rural distress is a big issue. Politically, also, you lose votes if mm. there is. Uh, mm. So, there's going to be a lot of pumping of the rural economy. Second, if you get a monsoon, that's mm. also good. So, what's going to happen? You've seen fertilizer companies running up, pesticide companies, seeds, uh, agri implements, agri irrigation, agri chemicals. Mm. All these ran up already. Then you have suppliers like tractor makers. Uh, like financiers of the tractors, all those companies ran up 6-7% mm. uh, on Wednesday. And then you come to consumer durable companies, mm. uh, straight away there would be a consumption hike. FMCGs are getting supported, mm. but FMCG there are other issues in the sector. Competition being Competition one, yeah. uh, in mm. intensity and the falling margins that mm. we are seeing with no, not much increase in volume. So mm -hmm. they have penetrated the India which could buy mm. and you are not really seeing an expansion there. Mm -hmm. So FMCG is uh, different, but all other sectors we have seen a difference, two wheelers, cement paints mm. immediately. Then if rural uh, houses start getting repainted, paint companies take off, cement takes off, two wheelers, 70 percent of uh, demand of motorcycles is semi-urban mm. and rural areas. Mm. That will So we already see 52 week highs mm. on the three uh, major two wheeler companies. So already market has front end discounted. Mm. Now from here there could be disappointment then mm. it falls sharply, mm. but market always is front ending. Right. So, Devapam, if you were to look at the agricultural impact again, agriculture supports more than half the country's population. To what extent could things change on ground for people? Well, agriculture indeed supports half the population, but the contribution of agriculture or contribution of half this population on the GDP is very minuscule. Correct. So, Less than 15%. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, the contribution of uh, enhanced agricultural productivity or enhanced uh, farm income is is not going to be that significant on the overall GDP, which would still be guided by obviously the service sector followed by the manufacturing sector, and with the the current CAPEX cycle and the current capital uh, formation etc. being at very low levels, mm -hmm. these these cycles are are yet to pick up, and the impact of manufacturing boom or impact of a service sector right. boom on the GDP is 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 a is a long uh, right. is long time to come. Right. So say. let me ask you a slightly different question. Now we've seen uh, in not the last two years but previous years good monsoons. But good monsoons also are sometimes not good all over the country. There, there, there's differential uh, rains, there is differential impact. What is your sense? I mean, what could be the best case and maybe not the best case? Well, uh, if you, and since you're talking about historical numbers, historically, if you compare or do a simple correlation between monsoons and prices, the correlation appears to be very weak. So historically, when everything else is going good, if when the manufacturing sector is good, when jobs are being created at a, at a healthy rate, when service sectors is doing well, Agricultural prices are not that dictated by you know how good or bad the monsoons are. This time the story is a little different because anyways the global economy is 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 weak. Uh, India has seen two consecutive droughts, so this entire thing has been uh, blown out of proportion, and and we are, we are expecting a lot of impact from agriculture uh, from monsoons on agriculture or, or uh, food prices. Mm -hmm. So so that that as I said at the beginning is again a, a concern. 
and and this this kind of a cycle needs to be broken for india to indeed become an emerging economy from a less developed uh, country right okay so ajay if you you know you talked about the various industries and i think interestingly enough you you placed uh, uh, sectors like uh, agricultural agricultural implements uh, agrochemicals first and then the durables is that because you see a lag of sorts or is it the way it yeah, usually lag. you know mm. because the sowing area will increase mm. immediately with the moisture content mm. so the sowing uh, area under sowing will increase and mm. immediately fertilizer agricultural implements pesticides mm. all these uh, get bid up then when the crop comes through and uh, people have surplus then the durables come through mm -hmm. so uh, that's how it's a primary level effect and a secondary level effect and, so and how long does this usually start showing at least in the past assuming all other factors are constant see again uh, also there's a huge government uh, impetus coming mm. in because uh, the pay commission and the orop will also uh, generate money into the rural economy either the remittance economy mm. or uh, ex servicemen staying there mm. they will have more money mm -hmm. and the uh, rural expenditure which the government is hiking mm -hmm. so money comes in probably they will uh, go up together mm. but in terms of the agricultural cycle it's a december cycle then right. as far as the uh, durables go right. you will see november december the durables uh, right. Picking so up. that's a good point. They were, you know, I was interviewing Uday Kotak uh, just last week on, uh, you know, how the macro numbers are looking, and for in his mind, this was perhaps the best signals that he was seeing in a year, uh, in in, a, in more than a decade, uh, when it comes to the various macroeconomic signals. Are you are you getting a similar sense? I mean, because he's talking about uh, the pension fund co uh, money coming, the uh, the fresh pay commission numbers money coming in, and then of course some of these good uh, news on the agricultural econo I mean, monsoon side. Right. So, I am in two minds now. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. You don't have to be as optimistic as this sounds. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, the reason is, uh, well, we'll definitely, the uh, overall aggregate demand in the economy will, should get a big push once this pe pe the ORAP mm. thing and the uh, pay commission uh, reports mm. are, uh, uh, suggestions are implemented. However, we have to ensure that the result, th there's definitely going to be an inflation. We have to ensure this inflation is a demand pull inflation rather than a cost push inflation that we have been seeing for so long. If it is a demand pull inflation, if RBI uh, accepts that and accordingly does not do a lot of changes to its current soft stance on interest rates, then it is a good thing. But if the inflation is continues to be a cost push inflation because uh, uh, industries are facing difficulties and hence uh, raw materials are expensive, etc., uh, inflation goes high, then then the interest rate environment is not going to improve as right. as RBI mm. governor himself had, had quoted in the last biannual bi uh, monthly statement that he wants to look out how this OROP and the pay commission thing plays out. Right. So you were, you were talked about interest rates earlier as well. So the general expectation again seems to be that there will be one more cut, maybe 25 basis points, and maybe for those who are feeling more optimistic, 50 basis point uh, does the monsoon change that story monsoon would uh, support that story for mm. the time being however another big feedback as i said was uh, or, or big uh, contributor to rbi's model would be how the uh, addition to aggregate demand plays out because of increase in pensions because right. of increase in salaries of government employees right okay uh, last word ajay so uh, overall are we things looking up uh, i mean of course it's only one week of data to go by yeah. but Things seem to be looking up and okay. it's a risk on rally globally. Mm. So, you know, uh, I think the bigger issue was China's exports going up mm. and this morning Chinese GDP coming at 6.7%. Mm. I think the risk on rally globally mm. is a much bigger issue. We tend to overanalyze domestic factors. Uh, last year, uh, despite monsoon, there was money coming into India or money would go out even if there's a good monsoon, if it's a risk of uh, mm. aversion, a risk aversion globally. So I think the global factors right. are much more And we'll important. talk a little bit about that after, the, after a break. We're going to a break, but come back. We'll talk about the markets, which have run up smartly in the last week. So what does that portend? And we'll also talk about a new payment system that's being launched, the United Payment Interface. And joining me will be AP Hota, Managing Director of the National Payments Corporation of India. Stay with us. Welcome back to Policy Watch. The markets have responded enthusiastically to the good news last week of the monsoons and other economic data. The BSC Sensex rose 953 points during the week to reclaim the 25,000 mark, settling at 25,626 points, while the Nifty went back over 7,800. Now, strong global clues also helped the markets this week, including data from China and rising oil prices. In a separate development, India unveiled a new payment gateway called the Unified Payment Interface, or UPI, which could make life much simpler for you and me when it comes to transferring 
funds from our bank accounts. Now, with money flows increasing mar across markets, what do the next few months look like? Will the stock markets hold at these levels or are the underlying concerns still strong? Still with me, Ajay Bagga and Devupam Chaudhary. And joining me is AP Hota, Managing Director of the National Payment Corporation of India. Ajay, let me begin with you. We saw a huge rally, actually, if you look at the week, uh, not seen for a while. Now, to what extent was this reflective of the monsoons, which we touched upon earlier? And to what extent is this a reflection of uh, global queues looking better? I think it was more global queues, though we interpreted it more as monsoon. Mm -hmm. Monsoon took a risk off the table. Mm. But uh, if monsoon had failed, there would be a lot of distress and a lot of uh, resources would have gone into rural uh, distress mitigation. Mm. So that uh, risk went off. Mm. Uh, but overall, if you see the uh, earnings are going to be uh, subdued mm. this quarter, that got uh, you know uh, baked in. Mm. And because of the global money coming in, if you see the FI inflows were very strong, Govind, mm. uh, all three days. And last day we saw nearly 600 crores mm. coming in. Mm. This was a reverse from April first week where it was negative. So what's changed? Uh, I don't know. Mm. I, I really don't know. Uh, I think it's more there was a big relief mm. because uh, China uh, uh, data came in well, their uh, exports went up. So if China's exports go up, the supplies into China are much happier. The Australian, Brazilian uh, markets, we saw a reaction. Currencies got stronger. Second is the uh, impact that who's buying from China. So those economies seem to be doing better. So overall, China became a metaphor for the global economy doing much better. And we saw a risk on rally in global markets, mm -hmm. not only Indian markets. You see the Japanese market went up. Mm. So strongly mm. right? because uh, Japan has become a huge supplier of intermediate electronics into China mm. and Japanese companies have plants in China which exports uh, which export in turn so I think China was the bigger factor than monsoon for that 600 crores of uh, money from mm. FI is coming in because monsoon will take six months to play out yeah but are you in terms of flows FI flows again since they control most market sentiment are you seeing a, a more secular uh, inflow or is it still looking like what came in last week would actually fly out again in two weeks time see we, uh, we saw outflows in Jan Feb mm. and then March was a very strong inflow nearly 23,000 crores coming in in March then April first week we saw outflows mm. and that was India funds uh, seeing uh, reversals mm. uh, globally people were pulling out money uh, in anticipation of poor earnings and an iffiness on monsoon mm. so the day RBI governor gave 25 basis point cut we saw a huge downfall in the market and FI is selling because fact was over. Mm. Now monsoon has come in, that has changed sentiment to a bit, but more is what is the uh, standing of the global economy. I mm. think that will lead uh, to uh, continued flows, right, right. but not at this sharper rate. Right. Devapam, what's your sense? I mean, external factors uh, affecting, influencing India's economy in the near That's term. That's a very good point I just raised. And uh, absolutely, global uh, issues are still there. And, and one very big ramification of it is the cl recent closed door meeting of uh, the Fed Governor Yellen with uh, Obama. The, result, the, the meeting details are still not out uh, in as much uh, mm -hmm. lucid terms as it, is, as it is usually the case. So something definitely is cooking there. Uh, U.S. economy may not be looking as good as is being expected by analysts globally. And also if you look at the St. Louis, which is the, which is a Fed branch, they come up with this global stress indicator, global stress index. The last two months, all of a sudden, this stress index has started to spike up once again, mm -hmm. suggesting that global financial stress, uh, for some reason, is again, once again, looking uh, mm -hmm. uh, adverse. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's not a good sign for the overall global economy and, and something definitely is going amass, mm. which is not coming onto the table as of now, but mm. when it comes, it will throw a lot of shock waves. And what is the potential impact of this on India? Because well, we've just talked about some of the good news, which is monsoons and how that could have a cascading effect on a whole bunch of things, including, of course, the economy. And well, the impact of global stress or global uh, economics further slowdown is a component in every uh, modeler's toolkit today, be it the finance ministry, be it the RBI, or be it individual analysts like mm. us because in, this is a globalized world and India cannot stay isolated mm. uh, our exports imports everything make a difference to the GDP mm. so definitely a global stress at, at this right. stage is going to significantly impact India's CAD and and hence India's overall GDP right okay Ajay so last word if you were to now look back in the last uh, three months or four months of this calendar year and look at what's happened in the markets in terms of the ups and downs, the expectations, the concerns, including corporate earnings, uh, and some of the good news that we've seen more recently. What, what is it all adding up to in the near term? 
We have lost 12 months, Govind. You okay. have to see March 9th, yeah. we were 9,000. Mm. Today, we are uh, shy of 8,000 mm. on the Nifty. Mm. So, we have had a price-wise correction and mm. we have had time to digest it. Mm. Markets might be sitting on the cusp of a takeoff. Mm. Uh, that's one big hope uh, I have. I am a little bit worried what uh, Devapa mentioned on the global risk. Mm. You know, that is where contagion comes into us. Mm. Otherwise, on an India story, I think the two years hard work of the government, now it is forming a base mm. where it can re revive the mm. economy. But the global risk is the big issue. And the RBI governor is a uh, very strict austerity uh, economist. Mm. He's not going to come in with further monetary stimulus. So mm. you have to have fiscal stimulus Stimul where you don't have the gap. So mm. the risk you're running is that another six months down the line, government runs out of money and the government capex stops. Mm. Private capex is already stalled. So all you have is private consumption running mm. and exports. Mm. Now, if Chinese exports translate into India exports also reviving, mm. then uh, the economy but has to end. But engines. India exports to have a lo long way to go. We are in a 15-month uh, uh, yeah. reduction or diminishing. But, you know, China yeah. had the same and it yeah. just uh, turned. turned. So, okay. we would like to see Similar, uh, yeah. what was the, uh, you know, uh, right. uh, what was the cause, the trigger right. for the Chinese exports. So, right now, economy is running only on private consumption and a bit of public uh, uh, expenditure. Right. And that's really the policy takeaway from this as well yeah. that while we may feel good and sanguine yeah. about what we're seeing around us or likely to happen around us as the rains come in in june but we've got to be very very careful about what the external impact could be am i right they last yeah, word yeah, that's right and uh, just taking uh, uh, forward uh, 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 sir's point on the raghuram rajan and how pragmatic he is we should not forget the fact that he was the first person to call the entire us bubble uh, real estate mm. bubble burst right. and a financial crackdown way back in 2005 mm. and he was definitely booed at that point of time mm. we uh, after so we so much, leave him more exactly, often than, exactly. We yeah. should have more trust on this guy. Right, Mr. Hota, thank you very much for joining us. Tell us about the UPI, the Unified Payment Interface. How does it work? What is it expected to do, particularly for common users like you and me? UPI is a Unified Payments Interface, and it is smartphone-based payment service, whereby uh, where a bank customer can send money or receive money on a 24 by 7 basis instantly and uh, the um, the financial address it uses is one of a email like address uh, on a very simple way the way people now are now transacting on uh, wallets uh, the same way they can transact on the bank account so it brings the convenience of wallets into the bank account and uh, it uses uh, a almost a virtual address uh, and makes uh, uh, the experience much simpler. Yeah. Mr. Hota, what is this address that you talked about and uh, what is it going to happen? What is going to happen? Suppose tomorrow I were to give you my address to receive some money from you and will it be s as simple as transferring those funds and from where would you do it? Right. The conventional way of giving the financial address is to give the 11 alphanumeric uh, IFSC code and the 10 or 15 digit account number and this uh, IFSC code and account number together gives the financial address of the person. In the revised scenario, in the UPI scenario, the financial address is just email like uh, address like AP Hota at SBI means there is a person whose identity is AP Hota and he has an account at SBI. So SBI domain name, State Bank of India, the domain name in short has been put as SBI and AP Hota, the way I would like to be called, the way I have the, my email address or Yahoo address, uh, you know, uh, Gmail or Yahoo address, the same way my financial address also becomes a simple address. At the back end, the entire IFSC code and the account number gets reserved. So once that happens, if I have to send money or receive money, I just have to use my virtual address. Uh, this is one. And uh, second thing is, as per uh, the uh, Reserve Bank guidelines, any online transactions, there have to be a two-factor authentication, what you have and what you know. In uh, the UPI scenario, the mobile, which is a smartphone and has an intelligence or a computer in it, acts as one factor of authentication and the other factor of authentication can be just the OTP or the password, the static password or a static PIN. 
so that makes uh, the payment processing much faster and the experience so now let's come to the larger question mr hota in terms of transforming cashless payments in india and what is the kind of potential that you see in terms of scale the first big potential is its impact on the e-commerce as you know people uh, e-commerce has been growing very rapidly and uh, one uh, problem that has, that is noticed is the success ratio in the e-commerce transaction after doing the shopping when uh, payment is to be made uh, even if you put the card number uh, expiry date cvb and thereafter the 3d secure code uh, the success ratio is hardly 70 to 75 percent in the upi that problem gets addressed by the pin uh, the pin that is to be given that is a part of the app itself so the merchants can integrate the app, uh, integrate the library for giving the password so the uh, friction for or the way the transaction will move jump from one server to another serv server that is really reduced to some extent and as a result of which the success ratio would be higher this is the first impact the second impact is, as you know, this uh, way wallets are growing rapidly because wallets are very, very convenient. Now, the operating the bank account also becomes as convenient as wallet. If this too happens, more and more people would, would start transacting on the mobile phone. This is the second thing. And uh, uh, the third thing, obviously, it rides on the IMPS, which uh, works 24 by 7. Uh, real time so the, the speed of transactions uh, goes up uh, significantly right right uh, let me come back to the larger question once again mr hota one of the challenges as you know in india is the effort to convert transactions into cashless which obviously will reduce the size of the informal economy and to what extent do you see this happening thanks to upi or efforts like upi in the near term and secondly what are the kind of policy interventions that you would like to see to make this truly popular in the journey to become more cashless as a country or economy the first thing is now we have just launched the system with a limited number of banks the network has to be made much bigger and we are working towards that and there is no regulatory hurdle for that uh, i i hope i hope it would happen the only regulatory thing is for the time being in the upi only only banks can participate not the wallet maybe the regulatory uh, clearance or regulatory uh, um, uh, support that is required is uh, opening up to uh, wallets as well uh, this is one thing that is required and the last thing and most important crucial thing is uh, the literacy part even if uh, it is smartphone based and primarily uh, aimed at the people who are already used to smartphones still then a little bit of uh, uh, apprehensions may be there because if this is something new uh, they would have to be told that really they would have to be educated as to how it is as secure uh, as uh, online banking uh, on the inter on the internet. Mm, so I believe uh, literacy work is uh, uh, to be done is significant. Right, Mr. Hota, thank you very much for uh, speaking to us on that one. Thank you, Debupam, and thank you, Ajay, as well. That's all we have time for on this edition of Policy Watch. We'll be back next week, same time. Thanks for watching.